Step outside and breathe in the air. Explore the world, meet new people, and have enriching experiences. For the most part, these are sound pieces of advice, but be careful where you tread, for not all destinations are safe and secure. The world is not only wonderful, but it is also treacherous. Yellowstone is an expansive national park cutting across the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Throughout its 5,586 square miles, you'll find a wide variety of wildlife and almost every environment imaginable, from snowy peaks and hot geysers to large valleys and lush forests. It sounds like a great destination for a safe and fun adventure, but the only problem is the entire area could explode at any time. Much of Yellowstone sits in what is called a caldera. These huge craters were formed during cataclysmic volcanic eruptions hundreds of thousands of years ago. Unfortunately, this monster beneath the earth is not dead, it is only asleep. The park is famous for its hot pools and giant geysers, some of which are deadly, but they are mostly seen by tourists as an interesting facet of nature, one fit for a photograph or two. But these very objects of interest point to a horrendous truth. The volcano is active, and scientists believe that it qualifies as a super volcano. And even more worrying, some researchers believe it is overdue for its next eruption. If the volcano did erupt, estimations are that it would potentially destroy much of the Midwest and shear the US in two. Many would die covered in a thick, incinerating flow of lava and fire. The resulting smoke, dust, and other debris shot miles into the air would significantly affect the climate, blocking the sun from the sky. Some scientists believe it is unlikely that the volcano will erupt within the next 1,000 years, which sounds comforting until one becomes cognizant of the current technological limits for being able to predict an eruption we would only have a few weeks' notice at best, with no way to prevent it. Scientists have only recently discovered the coldest place on Earth. There should be little to no surprise that it sits in one of the regions of Antarctica. But what is astonishing is just how cold and dark this location is, as well as the effects it would have on anyone trapped within. The temperature of this area is negative 136 degrees Fahrenheit. Researchers discovered this prison of ice between two vast ice domes, Dome Argus and Dome Fuji. They sit on the east side of the Antarctic Plateau, a place where even the strongest of bacteria struggle to survive. On this plateau, strange cracks opened up on the ice, puzzling scientists. There was no significant tectonic movement, and the ice itself was still, yet something was causing fractures in the ground. Using satellites which can measure ground temperatures accurately, scientists discovered the reason they occurred. The area was so cold that the ice and the ground itself were actually shrinking. This movement opened up these deep cracks and fissures. The interior of these cavities is cold and dark. A person would freeze to death within seconds. The water in their eyes would begin to freeze solid, as would the blood flowing through their veins. Indeed, some places on Earth were not meant for mankind to inhabit. If our planet teaches us anything, it's the incredible spectrum of the environment, from an icy cavern to hell on Earth, literally. Lut Desert in Iran has been dubbed the hottest place on Earth, and they aren't insinuating that it is a holiday destination. This sprawling desert is 200 miles long and 100 miles wide, stretching from the northwest of the country to the southeast. While it does play host to a variety of animals which have specifically evolved to survive in the searing heat for human beings, this arid wasteland is about as inhospitable as it gets. It's not only the heat which makes Lut Desert such a difficult place in which to survive, but the low humidity as well. 
It is a deadly place, and only those who are skilled and equipped can survive there. If you were to find yourself stranded in Lot Desert, the sun would slowly scorch your skin. The dry air would consume any moisture in your mouth, and quickly you would feel a desperate desire for water. But water is a scarce resource here, and it is unlikely that you would find any at all. The air is so hot that each breath would raise your body temperature while you would sweat out the essential electrolytes which your body requires to function properly. Within hours, you would have no strength left, delirium would follow, and you would die agonizingly of thirst. In order to survive, our species has developed an uncanny knack for adaptation. We thrive where we should not, struggling against the merciless hand of nature. But one tribal group in Canada regularly risks an icy death in a savage race against the tide and time, in order to win the struggle. The Inuit people of northern Quebec are expert muscle hunters. To find these creatures, they must gain access to the sea. The only problem is that the sea is covered by a thick sheet of ice for long durations. Deep underneath, the icy water rolls in and out due to tidal forces. As the tide temporarily retreats, it leaves huge empty spaces beneath the ice, which then become free of water. These temporary ice caves are accessible for the briefest of times. The Inuit peoples in the region dig into the ice and then climb down inside. Once they are underneath where the sea once was, they search for rich deposits of mussels clinging to the exposed seabed. But time is of the essence. While the mussels are gathered, the sea begins its roaring return, ferociously moving with the tide to fill the countless caverns and tunnels once more with freezing water. Regrettably, there are stories of muscle gatherers becoming trapped within the frozen underworld, stuck as the sea rises up above their heads in the darkness, consequently drowning and freezing them to death. Quicksand is often mistaken for a fictional danger, cooked up by Hollywood writers and directors for effect. But quicksand is a very real phenomenon, and should you ever find yourself standing in some, it is only a matter of time before you meet a very rapid fate. Quicksand can be comprised of a number of materials, but it is most commonly made of sand, salt water, and clay. It is usually found in coastal areas such as sandy beaches, where the tide covers an area of land and then retreats, leaving enough salt water to create the deadly mix. At first sight, a section of quicksand appears like a waterlogged piece of ground, with only an inch or two of water on the surface. But once a person stands on it, the ground becomes far from benign. The classic image is of a person sinking further and further as they struggle until they become submerged, but this is not entirely accurate. What actually happens is that the mix of materials creates a type of natural cement. An unlucky victim sinks to a degree as much as waist-high in some cases, but usually just to their knees. No matter how much they struggle, they cannot escape the quicksand's grip. One study suggests an average person would need to produce the same amount of strength that is required to lift a medium-sized car in order to pull themselves free. To be released by its force requires a water pump to liquefy the quicksand, and then a mechanized winch to pull a person to safety. It is possible in some circumstances for an individual to spread their body weight on the surface before they sink and pull themselves onto dry land, but this must be done early on in the process, for even the slightest hesitation would mean death. You might think that quicksand is more of an annoyance than anything else, but several deaths would quickly undermine that assumption. The second you step into quicksand, it is only a matter of time until the tide returns. Unable to free yourself, you would wait while the sea slowly gathers around you until it's over your head, filling your lungs. In some places, quicksand forms inland in desert environments. When this happens, it is not the sea which claims your life, but the burning rays of the sun.
We know that chemical warfare and poisonous gases have been used on people many times before. The horrendous effects of these weapons continue to shock us, and it is for this reason that they are banned under the Geneva Convention. Nature herself, however, does not pay heed to the whims and agreements of mankind. Volcanic eruptions are terrifying, but they are visible, which means they can be anticipated to a degree. But there is another type of eruption which is seldom spoken of, one which in 1986 claimed nearly 2,000 lives. Lake Neos was the site of one of these limnic eruptions. Surrounded by forests, the lake can be found in northwestern Cameroon. On the 21st of August 1986, a huge cloud of carbon dioxide bubbled up from the lake's floor, traveling at 62 miles per hour. It rose up and through two valleys, displacing any oxygen present. The people who lived in the area died from spontaneous suffocation. To this day, Lake Neos is still under a watchful eye. The Cameroonian government had pipes installed to help vent carbon dioxide from the lake bed so that it would not build up to catastrophic levels again. However, experts are not certain that the danger has passed. Worse still, there are other lakes where it is believed these eruptions could take place. One such lake exists in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Lake Kivu is 2,000 times as large as Lake Neos and would cause catastrophic loss of life to a huge area if it were to erupt. The Earth and its elements may come together randomly to kill, but it is mankind which can easily turn on itself. While we are certainly capable of unending acts of kindness, we are also capable of horrific acts as well. San Pedro Sula is not a large city by any means. This Honduran location cannot claim to rival the great megacities of the world, but it does have one dubious claim to fame. It is one of the most violent cities on the face of the earth. 187 annual murders per 100,000 residents were recorded as recently as 2013. A huge part of this is because of San Pedro Sula's strategic importance to the illegal drug trade. Unfortunately, the murder rates have only continued to rise. The majority of these murders have been gun-related, but stabbings, beatings, and torture occur on a near-daily basis in the city. The government is implementing increased army and police anti-crime squads, but the problems in San Pedro Sula will not easily be fixed. This is not a destination for the adventurous tourist unless you want to become another murder statistic. In time, it is hoped that the efforts of the city's law-abiding citizens will persist, and perhaps one day, San Pedro Sula will become a place of peace. They called it an arms race at the time, but looking back, many see the zeal for the development of nuclear weapons as a significant step towards potential extinction. However, we do not have to wait for an unthinkable war to see the product of our irresponsible works. Even the testing process itself has left an indelible mark. Most haven't heard of a place called Polygon. It can be found in the country of Kazakhstan, one of the largest nations on the planet. During the nuclear arms race between the West and Soviet Russia, the Russians used the Polygon as a test site a place to detonate their weapons of mass destruction over and over and over again, just to see what kinds of effects they would have in the surrounding environment. The result is now clear for all to see. Even today, nearly 30 years since the last of its 456 detonations, the area is fatal to people and animals alike. If you wish to visit some of the worst affected zones in the Polygon, then you'll have to wear protective hazmat suits. But even so, the outcome of lingering too long would mean receiving a fatal dose of radiation. Your hair would fall out, you would vomit blood, and the intense radiation would degrade your DNA until you simply stopped breathing. The tragedy of the Polygon can truly be felt in the nearest villages and towns. There have been significant birth defects, stillborn babies, and cancers. The scorched earth of the Polygon truly is one of the most dangerous places on Earth, and it was our species which made it that way.
Through mass media, it's easy to become desensitized to the images of war. But sometimes when we stop and look at the facts, it can still shock us that a brutal war has been raging for so long without an end in sight. The state of Somalia was created in 1960 as a produce, along with many other countries in poorer parts of the world, from the collapse of imperialism. No longer ruled by foreign empires, Somalia should have had a bright future. Instead, it headed straight into a brutal civil war. Warlords used sectarian divisions and group identity to split the population into different factions, vying constantly to be the last one standing. In 2012, efforts were made to create a stable government, and for the most part, this has worked as of recent times, but it is still a dangerous place. Violence persists, and power groups continue to use death and murder in an attempt to rule the country. The biggest challenge the government faces is from Al-Shabaab, an insurgent group which is aligned to Al-Qaeda. Terrorist attacks are commonplace, and the country faces difficult environmental pressures through drought, with 3.2 million people currently facing extreme starvation. This tragic combination of nature and nurture is going to result in many more deaths before a solution can be found. In a land which cannot guarantee its citizens' safety, visitors should heed these warnings and remain elsewhere. The phrase, on solid ground, denotes stability, an argument which tolerates scrutiny. It's an interesting metaphor, especially considering that the ground is not as solid as we think. Deep beneath our feet, complex geophysical processes are underway. Something stirs underground, and perhaps it may just swallow us up. There are many fault lines around the world, places where the tectonic plates, huge sections of the Earth's crust, moving on a sea of liquid magma, push and collide against each other. When two of these plates grind together with unimaginable power, devastating vibrations ripple through the Earth's crust, shaking mountains, people, and cities to their foundations. The San Andreas Fault is just one of these flashpoints. Numerous earthquakes have been caused by it before, but scientists believe another is on the way, and it could cause devastation to the entire Los Angeles area, a place which is home to nearly 20 million people. According to recent data, the tectonic plates in this area are pushing together with such force and with such intensity that sooner rather than later, there's going to be another big earthquake. Just how large is anyone's guess, but the higher it measures on the Richter scale, the more of this highly populated area will fall into the Earth. Some want to ignore this possibility, telling themselves that such things only happen in far-off places. But the science is sound, and while people should not panic at this conclusion, vibrations from the ground should be looked upon with great unease and suspicion. That's all for this episode. If you'd like to help to keep my content on YouTube, please see my Patreon linked in the description below, and my merch store also linked in the description below. Now be sure to check out another one of my videos by pressing on screen, and of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already by also pressing on screen now, because you won't want to miss what's next, and I'll see you next time.